Hi ladies, it's Mr. O'Sullivan. Today we're going to be doing lesson 3-3, three -three, the line reflection. So today what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at our learning target of I can use reflections to transform figures and points in the plane. So, so far we have learned about basic transformations and translations. What we're doing today is we're going to focus solely on how to reflect over the x-axis, y-axis, and over specific special lines. So like y equals 3, x equals 1, and then the negatives as well. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask that if you have this printed out, I want you to graph triangle ABC. So I'm going to graph it right now, but before I begin, I'm going to just put the quick little note that Miss Kimmick does. Miss Kimmick always, always, always puts those things above our quadrants. That way we know exactly which direction we should travel in. So the first point I'm going to plot is A12, so I'm going to go out 1 and up 2, so here's point A. Then I'm going to plot the point 3, 4, which is B, so I'm going to go out 3, up 4, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to plot C, which is 1, 5, so I'm going to go out 1, up 5. And this is point C. Ooh, doesn't look nice. Now what I'm gonna do after I have those points plotted, we're gonna connect them with nice straight lines. So if you have your Metro card, your ID, your whatever, use those to connect your lines. I'm gonna pause this video and connect them. Now that I have my triangle plotted, triangle ABC, we're gonna be doing some special things. Let's look at what we're gonna do first. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reflect it over the Y axis, the Y axis. So if we look, our Y axis is our vertical axis. It's right there. So whenever you want to just reflect, what we're going to do is all we're going to do is we're going to make our jumps. So I'm going to count from C to the Y axis and that's one jump. Right here, that's one jump. So I'm going to go out one and that's C prime. For B, I have to count how far away B is from the Y axis. So it's one, two, three. So I'm going to go three out. One, two, three. Here's B prime. Let me do some erasing because it's getting a little messy. And now we're going to count how far away A is from the Y axis. And well, A is only one jump away. So I'm going to go out one from my Y axis. And that's A prime. So I'm now going to connect those with some nice straight lines. And if you look, we just graph triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now what we want to do is we want to write down how we would have labeled those ordered pairs. So we can say that the point A prime is negative one, two. We can say that B prime is negative one, negative two, negative three, comma, one, two, three, four, negative three, four. And we can say C prime is negative one, one, two, three, four, five. Good, negative one, five. Here's what I have a question about. What do you notice about what I started with and what I ended with? Answer that in your Ed puzzle. Well, if you notice, when I reflect over the Y axis, my Y values are going to stay the same and I just make my X values negative. For instance, I started with a one, I ended with a negative one. I started with a three, I ended with a negative three. I started with a one and I ended with a negative one. My Y values will always stay the same when I reflect over the Y axis. The only thing that will change is my X value. Uh -huh. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reflect over the X axis. So our X axis, I'm gonna do in green this time, is this axis right here. So we wanna reflect triangle ABC, our original, over the X axis. And that requires us to just focus on making our jumps. So again, we're just going to count our jumps. Now we're going to reflect over the x-axis. So I'm going to start with point A. When I look at point A, I want to count how far it is from the x-axis. So I go 1, 2. So I'm going to make two jumps again. 1, 2. Here's where point A will be. And this is A double prime. Uh-huh. Let me make it look like a real A. That doesn't look like an A. And that's A double prime. I'm going to erase my jumps now. 
We're now going to do the exact same thing with C prime, and we're going to count our jumps again. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do five jumps. One, two, three, four, five. And here's where C double prime will be. I'm going to erase my jumps. And now what we're going to do is we're going to count from B to the x-axis to count how far we have to jump for B double prime. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here's exactly where B double prime belongs. I'm going to erase my jumps this time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those points with straight lines. And boom, there you have it. I have triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So we're going to now label those points. So those points, A double prime was 1, negative 2. B double prime was 1, 2, 3. 3, negative 4. And then C double prime was 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, negative 5. So what I'm going to ask you right now is, what do you notice? Good, you should have noticed that when you reflect over the x-axis, the only thing that's changing is your y value. So when I reflect over the x-axis, I keep x the same, and I basically make my y value opposite of what it is. So a 5 becomes a negative 5, a 4 becomes a negative 4, and a 2 becomes a negative 2. Perfect. Reflection notation. Occasionally we'll give it to you as R sub L, R sub L, R reflection over the reflection over the line L. This basically means that L is your line of reflection. And I can say x equals 3, y equals 4. We're going to be doing this shortly. I can also just say reflection over the x-axis and reflection over the y-axis. Um, notice that your R is always going to be lowercase. If it's an uppercase, that means you're going to be rotating. So here's just a way we're going to look at it, and we're going to look at it into a system of inputs and outputs. When you perform a reflection over the x-axis, you start with your ordered pair x comma y. We said before that when we reflect it over the x-axis, the only thing that changes is your y value. So x is still going to stay the same. And if I'm starting with a positive y, I'm going to end with a negative y. So you're negating your y value. So if your y value is negative, you make it positive. If your y value is positive, you make it negative. Now when we reflect over the x-axis, we said that we're basically just making, I mean the y-axis, sorry, when we reflect over the y-axis, we keep our y values the same, but we changed our x value. So we're going to be negating our x value. And instead of having a positive x, we're going to have a negative x. So I'm not saying that you're only going to have a negative x value. What I'm saying is that you're going to basically do the opposite. So if you start with a positive, you're going to end with a negative. If you start with a negative, you're going to end with a pos positive. My apologies. Okay, let's go on to some other examples where we reflect over lines other than the x and y axis. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to label triangle DEF, and then we're going to reflect over the line y equals negative 5. Well, we know D is negative 2, negative 2, so this is D. E is 0, negative 3, so this is E. And then F, by process of elimination, is 2, 0. I'm going to take a break, a pause. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to do what Miss Kimmick does and label my quadrants. So the first line we're going to reflect it over is the line Y equals negative 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in negative 5. Um, and that's going to go through the y-axis at negative 5. So my y-axis, all I'm going to do is I'm going to count down to negative 5. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I'm going to sketch a line going through negative 5. And I'm going to sketch this line in red. And I'm going to do it in gold. I'm going to do it dashed. And that's y equals negative 5. So I'm going to put some arrows on it also because lines go on forever and ever and ever. And this is y equals negative 5. 
So we want to reflect it over this line right here. So let me just do some erasing real fast because this looks a little messy. And here's how we approach it. We're going to do the exact same procedure we've been doing, and we're just going to count. You don't always have to count, but for y equals 5, x equals 3, all these special cases, you're going to have to do some counting. You're going to have to draw a rough sketch and count. So I want to count how far away E is from this line. So I go down 1, 2. So I'm going to do two jumps again. So 1, 2, and here is where E prime is. Okay, let me do some erasing. Now I want to count how far away D is. So D is 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Three. So here's where D is. That's D prime. And then last but not least, F. Well, F is one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go down five. One, two, three, four, five. So here's where F prime will be. What I'm going to do now is connect each of these points with straight lines. So use your Metro card or your ID, whichever. And if you look, we just reflected this over the line y equals negative 5. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to label those points. So d prime is negative 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 2, negative 8. E prime is going to be 0, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7. And then F prime is going to be 2, comma, negative 10. Perfect. And those are our values. Now what we want to do is we want to reflect our original image of DEF over x equals 4. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go through the x-axis. And we're saying x has to be equal to 4. So we're going to have a vertical line going through x equals 4, which is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where my x equals 4 is going to be sketched. So I'm going to sketch that in. I'm going to sketch that in black. And again, I'm going to just do it in a dashed form. It doesn't have to be dashed. It just looks nicer dashed. Now I'm going to get rid of my ruler. And again, lines have arrows. So we're going to put some arrows on here. And that's x equals 4. So again, all we're doing is we're going to rely on counting. This image will be in green this time. So I have to ask myself, how far away is the point f from x equals 4? Well, it's only 2 away. So I go, jump 2, so I'm going to go out to 1, 2. Here is where f double prime will be. Now we want to count the jumps from e to the point x to the line x equals 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's where I'm going to put the point E double prime. Now we want to do D double prime. Well, D is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here is where D double prime will be. I'm going to erase those odd points. Now that I have D double prime, E double prime, and F double prime plotted, I'm going to connect those with straight lines. And look, I just labeled, I not labeled, I just drew triangle D double prime, E double prime, F double prime. Now what we're going to do is we're going to label those points, so we're going to see those numbers. So D double prime was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, negative 2. E double prime was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. 8, negative 3. And then F double prime was 
One, two, three, four, five, six, six, zero. And that's it. So now we have those images drawn. Whenever you have something like those where you have to graph it over y equals three or something, or even an x equals, you will always, 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 you will always have to plot those on the grid. Now let's look at our properties that are preserved under a line reflection. So we didn't do any multiplying, we didn't do any division. Our figures are starting out at the same length and ending with the same lengths. So we can say that under a line reflection, distance is preserved. Our angle values also are going to be the exact same. So we can say that our angle measures will remain the same as well, and that's preserved as well. Parallelism, you betcha, our segments will be parallel to our, from our pre-image to our new image. And then last but not least, orientation. The direction of labeling is the same. Well, let's look. My D started out on the left. Now it's on the right. My F started out on top. Now it's on bottom. Orientation is not going to be preserved. So since orientation is not preserved, we actually don't call this an isometry. We call this an opposite isometry. That's it for today. If you have any questions, please email myself or Miss Daniel. Have a great day, ladies.